before the lights go out because you know tomorrow is iffy. Hey. He's a huge I got the COVID blues and I'm feeling so low down. I got the COVID blues and I'm feeling so low down. I got the COVID blues and I'm feeling so low down. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much, thank you so much for coming out today to celebrate the 4th of July. We're having an Independence Day celebration because this is where the four corners of freedom of the United States, the seeds of democracy, were sown over here. Kingston was the first capital of New York State. There are more pre-revolutionary war stone buildings here than anywhere else in the country. Back there is the courthouse. The Constitution that was written for Kingston, New York, for New York State, over 70% of America's Constitution comes from the Constitution that was written there. So when I say the seeds of democracy, was sown in Kingston, New York, they are, they still are, and that's what we're fighting for. Freedom, peace, and justice. Now to bring you up to the top, no in between, at the very, very top, ladies and gentlemen, live from the Four Corners of Freedom in Kingston, New York, Judge Andrew Paisano Napolitano. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We all know those iconic words written by Thomas Jefferson in the preamble to the Declaration of Independence promulgated in Philadelphia on July 4th, 1776. Freedom lies in the human heart and while it is there no army no dictator no majority no crowd can take it away but like any good muscle it must do more than just lie there we're uniting for freedom peace and justice and the person to talk about the banksters, what they're doing, what's next, and how to prepare, prevail, and prosper. Ladies and gentlemen, originally from Kingston, New York, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, Lynette Zhang. Yeah. And the chick knows how to boogie, too. Thomas Jefferson warned us if the American people allow the private banks to control the issuance of our money, of our currency, first through inflation, then through deflation, the corporations and the banks that grow up around them will rob us of our property and our children will wake up homeless in the continent that we conquered. We were warned, and I hate to say this, but this is where we are today. What happened in 1913? As Ron Paul warned us, it is no coincidence that the era of perpetual central banking 
and the era of perpetual war coincided. And this is where we are today. We are in another revolution. We are transitioning into a brand new system that started in 1913. Because before that, we had a good money system. We had gold and silver. And we should understand the whole point of money, which is really about allowing the population to specialize. And money, you get paid for your labor and your effort. But governments, they don't want you to know taxation without legislation. Didn't that create the other revolution? So they don't want you to understand the invisible inflation tax. And corporations, they want you to work for less and less money and get you to volunteer it. So when they created this fiat system, which the literal translation is by decree, it's government money. They knew that people marry the legal money of the state. Oh, the dollar can never go away. And they also knew that not one man in a million understands inflation because inflation creates nominal confusion. You see the stock market going up? Well, you know it costs you more when you're buying anything, but what you're really seeing is the value, the purchasing power, the value of the dollar going down. And this is happening globally, so it's not just here. And the system is at its end. 1913 was the beginning. I, was, I graduated from Kingston High School in 1972, just as they transitioned us completely off the gold standard onto and handed over the full control of inflation to the private, for-profit banks. Today, officially, we have less than three cents out of the original dollar's worth of purchasing power. We're at the end. They have to attack the principal. They can't attack the value anymore because there's really no value left. But when you say, well, how did this happen? It's because of that nominal confusion. I remember standing in the doorway and my father built hillside acres up here and my parents worked out of the house and I would have been about 16 years old and, and IBM was big in this town at that time and I remember my mother pounding her fist on the table after some people had just left and saying he's a comer he's a comer he makes twelve thousand dollars a year he was an engineer at IBM, but the average income then was 9,500 bucks. A family of four could live on 9,500 bucks, one income. So yeah, he made $12,000 a year. He bought a very nice house. They went on vacations. They saved for education. He was being fairly paid for his labor. Today, ooh, we have what? An average income of 53000 and it takes two people and their paycheck to paycheck. The stimulus was given to those making less than 150 couples, making less than 150000 a year. What does that tell us? And now, what do they have in mind? So I want you to really think about this. Because when you have physical gold and silver, it is labor-based. You are trading your labor for someone else's labor. That's fair. And it's savings-based because it takes time and en energy to pull it out of the ground and process it. The fiat money system, it's a debt-based system. And don't we all know how much debt they created? Going back to what Ron Paul said. It is not a coincidence that the era of perpetual central banking, because up till that point, there was a charter for 15 to 20 years, that the era of perpetual central banking coincides with perpetual war. And when you look at the wars, well, yeah, what, what did countries do? They went off the gold standard to fund the war. Then you created hyperinflation. The population lost all confidence. They went back on the gold standard again. But what do we have now? We went off the gold standard in 1971. And today we're at the end of this grand experiment. And where do they want to take us? 
at least with fiat money, if you have a dollar bill in your pocket, you cannot protect your purchasing power, but you can protect your principal. We are now going into digital currencies. That's programmable money. Programmable money. Are you freaking kidding me? Because these central banks will have the ability, look, look at China, China's testing, China's showing the whole world how to control their population. Because now these central bankers will have the ability to dictate what you can spend your money on, where you can spend your money, they can go to negative interest rates, they can pull the taxes out whenever they want to, if you allow this to happen. We are at a crossroads right now. We can either say, ah, okay, because hey, it is so much more convenient to wave your phone around than it is to have to figure out where you're gonna store your wealth, your gold and your silver. But gold and silver are truly the only monies that are decentralized and outside of the government's ability to really rob you. Even the Bank for International Settlements, the central banker's central bank, in a recent report stated that gold held at your home is not subject to political intervention because it's really invisible. That's the battle. I mean, a rising gold price, I mean, I, I'm sure there are people that are out there that are buying gold and silver and going, oh my God, but it hasn't gone up. Here's the thing, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. If you actually understood that, you would make different choices. So what's the central bank's job? To keep you calm. What's the government's job? To keep you calm. And they both want you in the system because then what you're really doing is volunteering your wealth. The central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, I gotta be honest, they scare the hell out of me. Because if you think we've lost our freedoms now, just wait. So I am quite frankly appreciative of how they suppress the visible price. But there is a huge difference between what you see on Wall Street and the reality of the physical. Why does gold hold its value? Because if you listen to the central bankers, even though they're accumulating it more than they ever have before, it's just an old relic. It's just tradition. No, no. It's used across the entire global economy, every single area. It has the broadest base of utility and the broadest base of buyer. And they have never been able to duplicate the properties of gold and silver in a lab. That's why it holds its value. This is not rocket science. But what about the fiat money today and the digital money of tomorrow? One place, one place. So really, who has the most utility? We have to choose. It's not for me. I mean, honestly, you know, I'm 66. I'm going to be here for a little while. But my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, the World Economic Forum, you will own nothing and be happy. Exactly. Really? Because wealth never disappears. It merely shifts location. And if you do nothing, you are allowing and volunteering your wealth to shift away from you. But you know, I also want you to know, this is not all doom and gloom. Because for those of us that are prepared, and it takes more than gold and silver, I mean, truthfully, you can't eat gold and, well, you can, actually. They do use it in food, very thin. But generally speaking, you can't really eat gold and silver. So you need to be as independent and self-sufficient as possible and come together in community. When
Absolutely. Absolutely. When Gerald said, will you come, I did not hesitate. I said, of course I will come. And it's because, for me, it really is all about community. And if we can help ourselves, I mean, March 2020, when the store shelves went bare and everybody was freaking out and couldn't get toilet paper, right, I was able to help a lot of people. And look at where we are right now in this beautiful garden. Food for the eyes, food for the stomach. And we need to really think about what happened in March 2020, because that was just a teeny little taste. People don't know how to grow food anymore. You look at Venezuela that's in hyperinflation, and after the fact, oh, people should have rooftop gardens. I'm telling you, you need to. Food becomes the single biggest issue. The barterability of silver and gold is, is in the fact that it's universally accepted. So if you have blueberries that I want and I have strawberries that you're allergic to, I have to find somebody else that can give me something that you want that you're not allergic to. Whereas if I have a dime, that's universal. So that's the beauty part of having silver and gold is in its universal acceptance. But what, why I'm here today is about coming together as community. And every single person here has the opportunity to spread that message and make our community bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they can't get away with it. There's more of us than there are of them. So I would really like to leave everybody with this message of community more than anything else and getting yourself prepared. The time to do it is now. And the way to do it is look at where your pain was last year in 2020 and start to fill those holes. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, truthfully, any talent you have, anything physical that you have, there's a finite amount, it's barterable. So it isn't like you have to have a lot of those fiat dollars to make this happen. You just have to look at where your pain was that we all got to experience and say, what can I do today to fill that hole and then come together and bring your talents to the community because together we're a whole lot stronger than they are. And like Gerald says, you don't need a majority, just need a really strong minority that says, no, you can't have my labor for free anymore. You can't take my freedom away from me. Thank you so much. Miss Lynette Zang. What is she hanging out there? Oh so if you need anything, just call Aunt Lynn.